<clears throat> oh, Mother Saint Jean, beings, especially those enemies who hate me, obstructors who harm me, and those who create obstacles to my path to liberation and religion. May they experience happiness, be separate from suffering, and save love, establish them in the state of unsurpassed, perfect, complete, and precious Buddhahood. Oh, Mother Saint Jean, beings, especially those enemies who hate me, obstructors who harm me. And those who create obstacles on my path to liberation and damnation, may they experience happiness, be separate from suffering and safely. I will establish them in the state of one's purpose, perfect, complete, and precious Buddhahood. The light don't worry, Zibeda, no bar, Zibege, Tarba, Dan, Dam, Jen, Jen, Be, Barde, Ju, Barde, Zibe, Dam, Jen, Jen, To, Zibe, Ma, Nam, Ga, Dan, Nyan, Be, Zim, Jen, Dam, Jen, Se, Wa, Dan, Be, Dung, Ar, Dan, Jar, Nyur, De, La, Na, Me, Ba, Yang, Da, Barde, Do, Be, Zan, Ju, Rung, Bo, Je, Do, Bo, Re, Zo, Thus, under our achieving enlightenment, I perform virtues due to the body, speech, and the mind. Under death, I perform virtues due to the body, speech, and the mind. From now until this time tomorrow, I perform virtues due to the body, speech, and the mind. We take refuge in the Kandaru Lama and the Lineage Lama. We take refuge in the deities of the Manalas of the Yadam. We take refuge in all the exalted Buddhas. We take refuge in the perfect Dharma. We take refuge in the excellent order of the Sanghas. We take refuge in all the noble Dragas, and Dakinis, and the Dharma Gardens, the source of the eye of wisdom. And I attain the heart of enlightenment. I take refuge in all the Buddhas. I take refuge in the Dharma, and likewise in the example of the Bodhisattvas. As the previous Buddhas and based the enlightened mind and the progress on the Bodhisattvas path, uh, two for the benefit of all sentient beings, giving birth to Bodhicitta, and apply myself to complete stage of the path. In the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha, most excellent, I take refuge on training like teammates reach. By the merit of practice in Janara, and other deeds, may I train Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings. May all mother sentient beings, boundless as the sky, have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be liberated from suffering in the causes of suffering. May they never be separate from the happiness that is free from sorrow. May they rest in calamity, free from attachment and aversion. <clears throat> so now we're going to do the short mandala offering, page 10a. Eh? The ground is sprinkling with the scented water and is strewed with the flowers. It is adorned with the meadow, the spring mountain, the four continents, and the sun and the moon. As Buddha fear I offer it, may all sentient beings attain the happiness of the Buddha fear. To the Lama who possesses the three kayas, I offer the altar, inner and the secret offering, with my body, word, and all that is visible. Please grant me the supreme realization in light remain. Whatever merit I have gathered through postations, offering, confession, rejoicing, beseeching, and praying, for the sake of the enlightenment of all sentient beings, all this I dedicate on Guru Rinam and Rala Punta Manga Saman Avarana Samaya Ho. I eco refuge, on the name of the world, your fame provides the three thousand words. You are the victor, Vajadara, widow adored, I bow at the feet of Father and Yuki Sungo. Continually I think of no one but you. Compassionate one, grant your blessings. Dispare the darkness that surrounds my heart. Please bless me so that I can realize and liberate nature of mine. Please turn the veil of the Dharma of the two veils and their combination according to the disposition and the likewise. The mental capacity of a sentient being. So now we go to chant the Manjushri, page 32. It's a long press to Manjushri. His wisdom is brilliant like the sun. 
Fill of the clouds of the two worlds and perceive the various states of knowledge in the true nature. For this reason, he holds wisdom text at his heart. He has compassion for all beings who suffer from the darkness of ignorance in the prison of samsara as feather for only sun. Like a thunderclap, he waking those who are sleeping in ignorance and losing to the charm of karma through the six branches of Haramani's speech. He wears the wisdom sword to cut the setting of suffering and to dispel the darkness of confusion. In the Bodhisattva form, he is pure from beginningless time, fully accomplished in the ten levels and perfect in the body of all knowledge. I supplicate you, majorly adorned by the 112 sons of Buddha, to dispel the darkness of my ignorance. Om Arapata Nade, 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 Om Wange Shoremo, Om Wange Shoremo, Om Wange Shoremo. Short press to Majishiri. You who are the perfect, youthful body, you whose flame of wisdom breath and displaying the darkness of worldly ignorance. I post it before you and press you, Manjushiri. <clears throat> okay, so now we are going into the teaching. So my song is okay. Can you hear clearly? Okay, so let me know anything like problem with the song. <clears throat> Uh, so today the, our teaching is uh, stage of meditation waking the mind. So introduction is we finished. Then this uh, me body of the text has uh, eight chapters. So first chapter is how to meditate in four thoughts. That turn the mind. You have that teaching. Second is how to meditate on love. So we already finished that. And the third is how to meditate on compassion. Uh, fourth is how to meditate on bodhicitta. Five is how to meditate on shamatha. So this five chapter is we already discussion together. Today we are, I think it's in the chapter five, how to meditate on, no, no, sorry, chapter six, how to meditate on vipassana. Is it correct, right? Vipassana. Uh, so then this vipassana has uh, two different levels. Uh, two sections is uh, the we can say the two aspects to vipassana, so analytical or discursive meditation and the non-conceptual meditation rest in the mind. So I think we finished the analytical part. So analytical has two different, like, uh, two subcategories, meditating on the selflessness of person and meditating on the selflessness of phenomena. That too is the hardest section. Uh, so we, I think, finish that one. Today, we are resting mind meditation. So, which page we are? Sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Okay. Thank you. Mm. I see. So we are in the. We finish the uh, first section. Actually, this uh, uh, second second category is known as resting meditation. So resting meditation. Uh, very new person how to meditate 
the so then one is like more become once you have gotten a little more airdrop practice so that two seconds are things we finish it so now we are when you gain great accomplishment right in there okay uh so today we are in the uh resting meditation so resting meditation is a different than selflessness of a person and the selflessness of phenomena so we don't have use analytical so this uh, resting meditation is actually beyond the concepts and beyond analysis uh, so then this one is a uh, uh, different individual levels uh, you know using different ways especially here we talk about the three different levels if we are really new and beginner meditation then we have to look to our mind and have to recognize our natural mind first that's most important mm. so then your recognize your natural mind and relax your awareness is there and then you can see your mind is a clarity of awareness so where there is no object of meditation no point of reference so then with nothing to attach into us arm bone nothing to suppress and nothing to do nothing to let on to us either empty or not empty just rest your mind so that is the we are first beginner going into meditate resting mind vipassana so then once we are more practitioner uh, then you can look to our thoughts and we can watch our thoughts first like we cannot watch our thoughts and emotion just minds try to stay in the nature recognize nature mind so then once we recognize our nature mind minds can sit in to rest in there then you can watch the thoughts and emotions so watch the thought and the emotion is like more practitioner if our minds know of course this is a shamatha we, our minds already has a stable uh, you know no vipassana this is a vipassana meditation so shamatha already going first minds must be stable the analytic is already going before the this because you understand clearly what are you doing recognize so then you into the noise practice and you are into the your mind nature your mind be the nature you have to recognize and uh, that's the first step then second is like once you have gotten a letter or adopt at practice so whatever arise and whatever appears you will only need to look directly into it means like just whatever appear in our mind can be thoughts can be emotions or can be forms or can be feelings whatever arise so you just need to look directly into it means you have to recognize that look to that you will not need to put any special effort into resting your mind beyond this means no find need to find any other solution just recognize let be let go away you know when anger arise don't try to uh, get a solution something you know and oh i have anger so no i have to meditate maybe love or compassion or maybe you thinking about a measurable for for a measurable practice or something so that is you looking something solution so then that is like not vipassana resting meditation vipassana resting meditation whatever arise 
no rejecting, let arise, recognize, have to see that, and let be, you know, just liberate. Don't follow the thought, emotions, you know, uh, need, no need to find any solution, like try to stop that. Just whatever arises, let arise. And then your awareness is low to that thought emotions. Then thought emotions actually, they are also rootless, groundless, and they are not exist. Then you see that the thought emotions naturally liberating. So that is the only the really good practitioners can do high level. So that's why here is the uh, not talking about this is for first beginners. See, first one is when you are new to the meditation, then just try to stay in the nature, recognize and be there. Uh, you know, once then you are more got in later more adopt then your mind is, of course you have your mind has like clear and uh, awareness stable so whatever arise you recognize not rejecting then just see that no accepting just seeing and liberating so that's what the meditators are doing in this section. It's this part is like Mahamudra, Dzogchen, whatever talks in here, no difference. Because this is a result of Vipassana, result of the Maya Minka teaching. So I already talked a lot about these things. Maya Minka has so much preparation come into this natural state. But Mahamudra Dokin just directly told this one. And the essence, truth is the same thing, no difference. Any this uh, high higher teachers, so like higher teachings, higher teachings so like Mahamudra, Dokin, Maya Minka, they all essence the same teaching. Uh, so Mahamud this Maya Minka using analytical lot. Analytical is a very important Maya Minka teaching. So Zoki and Mahamudra, they really don't use much analytical. They just know where the minds come from, where it's going, where it's be, you know, sometimes they does that, but not same is like Maya Minka investigating selflessness of a person, selflessness of a phenomena. So then the main essence teaching point is the same. Uh, so now when you are getting greater accomplishment in the practice, so we are last week, I think we live here, so now we're going to continue. When you gain greater accomplishment in the practice, become we are meditate, more meditate, used to, and then we can say when we can greater accomplishment in the practice. So this is a, or is meditation. Meditation means like we have to habituate, used to that. So have to practice and use to habituate. Otherwise, like if we recognize all this teaching, you know, understanding teaching, but if we don't meditate, then we don't get anything this uh, result and uh, of course not possible to get experience too uh, so no you will be free from any grasping at meditation or object on, on which to meditate and therefore you will be free from any contrary or effort for meditation mm. So become more practitioners, then they don't really have to put effort. Uh, so then kind of like naturally into the meditation. 
and who can go into the natural in the meditation, no need to put effort, then that person is will be free from any grasping at a meditation or object. So we have this right now, we wanted to meditate. Oh yeah, I have to meditate. You know, we need grasping a little bit into meditate positive things. Without that, we cannot go into practice, our beginners. So this is a really high level practitioner, means already used to, then that kind of people are no need to put effort to go into meditation. Meditation is effortless, other worldly things is like, you know, uh, put have to effort. So regular beings, we don't have to put effort in the minds, follow the thoughts. We don't have to put effort to like, just, you know, some subtle things like, already we have created habitual, we can follow that easily, just going, you know. Same as the river is like falling down. So no one needed to push down, just the river is going down naturally. So our minds are like that already, habitual at samsara, we don't have to put any effort. And this part is like for practitioners who already has used to meditation. So then that person minds naturally into the meditation. They don't have to put effort. See, it's become opposite. You know, regular beings, our minds go to samsara, worldly thought, things effortlessly, naturally going to their direction. These meditators, practitioners going into other way, they're into the meditations naturally. Then they have to put effort to do something, worldly things, you know. So that is the become, you can see the practitioners or non practitioners are different. Yeah. Uh, free from any grasping at a meditation object on which to meditate and therefore you will be free from any contrary or effort for meditation. No any effort. Free from any contrary or effort for meditation. Mm. The true essence, the autonomic meaning of all the myriad myriad collections of dharma teachings in existence is just this original mind unmodified so what here is the main point is talking about the true essence means all the buddha's essence is just recognize our own mind nature that is all the essence of the teaching mm. The autonomy meaning of all the myriad collections of Dharma teachings, all these teachings. The why is so much have their different teachings? Because all teachings the the, the taking in to recognize our own nature. So here, stage of meditation, we have uh, eight chapters, I think. So that's all is why is like other chapters. Because all these chapters, like this all topic, different kind of teachings, the main point is we recognize our natural mind. So that's the reason we have to do so many, you know, the teachings. That's the reason we have this different kind of practice. So this mind nature is uh, not easy to recognize. We have so much obstacles and emotions create already so that that's the reason we have to purify our obstacles and we have to create our accumulation merit and uh, we have to practice you know different levels then uh, one day we recognize our own nature so recognize our own nature also not enough we have to meditate and practice. Then already talked to her like new ones, like new to the meditations, more try to focus in the resting mind, 
try to go into that level. Then more practitioners, like whatever thoughts, emotion rise, just recognize, let go away, let liberating actually. Then very high level meditators, like not really needed to put effort, anything naturally into that natural state. So they talk about the three different levels. Uh, so Buddha talks so much of Dharma collection, see, myriad collection of Dharma teachings is existing. Why this so many teachings? It is just this. To try to recognize this nature or original mind. Means like we have the nature is ambiguous time, are always be with us. So this teachings all main point is recognizing that's our nature. No any other than that. So no, where is Buddha? Buddha is our mind nature. No, Buddha is no any other than that. So we have that nature Buddha, but why we don't recognize? Because we have obscuration. And we have so much, uh, you know, uh, karma, create our, we create our own karma. If we don't purify our karma, and we don't purify our obscurations, we cannot recognize our original mind. So that's the reason this, all the teachings, is purifying our karma, purifying our obscurations, create accumulation merit, and then we recognize our original mind. I'm modified. Okay, I'm modified. Original mind means like no any obstacles, there no emotions, no uh, nothing there, you know. Uh, so it's pure mind, just pure mind nature. We have that nature always be with us, but usually we don't recognize. Yes, so then there's no higher practice than sustaining this. Then we talk about, oh, this is a teaching, it's the highest level, oh, this is a like beginner. But actually, uh, you talk about the highest teaching, it's like practices, like you maintaining the what you recognize. That practice is the most really higher level practice. So first, we have to recognize our natural mind. Then second, we have to maintain that and meditate, practice. So that teaching is the highest level. Then also, like depending our individual level. So higher practice, not higher practice, is depending our individual level. Whatever we practice, we have to maintain that practice, which is benefit for us. That practice is the highest practice. Okay, so here, just main point is we recognize our mind nature, and then we sustaining that nature, that practice is highest level. So that means we have to meditate. Whatever arises, let it arise without grasping onto it. So thoughts, emotion, whatever arises our mind, no rejection, just let arise. Okay, let it arise without grasping onto it. Even like negativity, of course, no hatred to the negative thoughts, positive things no grasping like no attached to that we have these problems like example if you get the bad dreams you are unhappy and hatred to that you get good dreams you are attached grasping onto that so same thing like when we practice dharma or meditate something so sometimes we are attached to good qualities he tried to negative things, but actually high level practice means no accepting, no rejections. They don't have good or bad. Both uh, we have to liberate. Cannot attach to positive, cannot he tried to the negative. Uh, so let arise is without grasping onto it. So that means like also, 
retain all my practices like Mahamudra. You cannot attach to that. Or some other people's practices, uh, you know, Hinayana or Four Thoughts, yeah, their practices are not my Vajrayana or their practices are not especially the thing about all Mahamudra. So my practice is Mahamudra, my is the highest level. If you think that, then that is become obstacle. So we have to free from all this uh, grasping onto it means like, you know, we cannot attach to our own religion. We cannot attach to our own lineage. We cannot attach to our guru and the, of course teachings, anything. So this is at the, in, the, in the natural state meditation. We can have and relatively, we can attach to positive hatred to negativity. But when you are in the meditation, you know, Mahamudra in the meditation, we cannot grasp into, into anything like positive too. So let it arise without grasping onto it. The grasping at a duality of self and other is the root of samsara. Mm. So if we are uh, grasping to anything, then that is the root of of samsara. So where is the grasping is come from? At dualistic thought. First dualistic thought. Then that become very more strong in the stone, then comes, you know, uh, self-grasping arise. Self-grasping is root of samsara. So it need not be said that grasping at the negative side. So of course we not attached to, usually we not attached to negative side. Usually we hatred to the negative side. Like the three poisons is pro problematic. As this is clear, so that's we clearly we know. So we not attached to these three poisons. But we cannot say no attached to three poisons means attachment. You know, sometimes we we are so much we have a grasp and attached to something, so we don't want to let go of that. So always we holding that, you know, we hold that, we don't let go. We we uh, uh, attach to actually kind of three three poisons. When we have anger, we don't let go, you know, we don't want to let go. And uh, when we have a attachment, we don't want to let go. So, and due to the ignorance. So this three poison is all the root of the uh, root of the problematic. As this is clear, mm, if we we are attached to that, that is a big problem. That is clear. Uh, but even grasping at the positive side such as grasping to view. See, view, view is like meditation, like, uh, you know, Mahamudra or what I hear talking about, uh, you know, natural mind, original nature, original mind, unmodified nature. So we are attached to that, then that's also problem to view meditation and the conduct. Then sometimes we attach to our conduct or my moralities, you know, and my lineage, my religion. So that's all is like, also become positive also, uh, we have to uh, release, like just uh, cannot attach to that positive thing. Conduct becomes an impediment to liberation. So that's all is become obstacle through the liberation, recognize natural mind. Therefore, no matter what, what arises, do not grasp them onto anything. Positive, negative, whatever arises our mind, when we are in the meditation, we cannot grasp into that. Uh, relatively, and we say, in the post meditation, so you are attached to positive is okay. 
not attached to negative. You know, you can be attached to positive. That helps you go to the right direction. But this one is not talking about uh, post meditation. This is talking about in the meditation. That's why we cannot attach to anything, positive and negative. This is spring part. So then that is the highest level practice. Uh, this is hard to do it. Then how do we practice this? So we already told you, yeah? how do we practice this? Relying on this method is beneficial in depending confusion. Mm. So relying on this method is beneficial. Mm. So the word is dispelling. Dispelling. Huh? Dispelling means getting rid of. Dispelling is a get, get rid of, yeah? Yes. Confession, okay. Mm, yeah, true, true. Relying on this method is beneficial in discipline, confession. Uh, whenever your mind wanders off in distraction, so when we meditate, we always get distraction, such as when desire arises. Uh, pacify this distraction and quickly bring your mind back. So here is this method is giving like for new to the practitioners, new practice, new meditations. Uh, so when we meditate, then of course like desire is arise in the meditation. So the desire is also many different kinds of desire arise. Desire is like here is generally, but uh, when you are in the meditation, so many different kinds, you know, like maybe you can have desire to positive or you have desire to negative. Many different kinds arise. So pacify this, try to let go and uh, pacify this distraction and then quickly bring your mind back so let go desire and the mind back into natural state rest in mind whenever you notice the mind to be unhappy so then when we meditate so sometimes your mind is unhappy too uh, so this section is uh, followed by more meditations experience uh this meditation meditator you know individually has a different kind of experience of course it cannot be same the individually has different own experience then sometimes like these meditators notice mind to be unhappy so why is mind not unhappy that also, it's actually have obstacle. Sometimes, like not enough accumulation merit. That's why this meditation tutors get unhappy too. Sometimes, like you know, these meditators uh, know how to go into the natural state, but don't know the how to release obstacles. So that's the reason we need analytical meditation analytical helps you know release our all our negative thoughts negative emotions and purify lots of jobs thought uh, so meditators get unhappy seeing the quality of samadhi then we have to cultivate happiness means we have to go back to read you know some positive qualities in the meditation the teachings that talk about you know natural mind quality and talk about the buddha's quality 
and uh, then we can also visualize the Yadam deity supplication to Ru Guru. So that's all we have to apply in the meditate when we get unhappy and sad. So sometimes like you go into the resting mind, like then fear is like nothingness. So become, you just kind of lost yourself. you get that kind of feelings. Then it's arise like kind of a sad feeling, sadness feeling arise. So that's actually not bad, but the people, when you have that kind of feeling arises, they don't want to meditate, they don't want to practice because it's obstacle. Uh, actually, not re really on only obstacle, but we have to go through that. So some people don't have enough accumulation merit, they don't want to go back to meditate. And also, the who meditate like need some teachers to guide, help for them to when they have experience ends share to the teacher and the teacher give advice like you know how to go through that so then who meditate the student they don't give up and have to put more effort and practice <clears throat> so here this section uh west in our country here has many people has difficulty in this level because they receive teachings but then when they meditate, practice, and no be with the teacher, one thing. Secondly, and they read lots of books, and then they meditate, but some, you know, sometimes only reading books, not enough. Some who has like kind of a more experience, they can need to help to go through this difficulty level, you know. And so, the books usually the teachings talk about generally they individually has a different experience and a different kind of obstacles so that's the reason the teachers needed to help to clarify that obstacle you know problem or whatever the difficult have to like um, give suggestions like like uh, free from that obstacle so that's reason here many people does meditate and uh, meditation is followed by reading the book then when you get in this uh, shamatha no vipassana level shamatha is actually okay but vipassana is without a teacher is the hardest level so meditators like in here you know, Western country, read the book and then follow that and meditate. And then they meditate, meditate. One day they think that they know how to meditate. And they meditate, but then the quality is always the same. Like become, go back to more wars sometimes, you know, get more uh, uh, pride, you know, increasing pride and then decreasing devotion uh, also then criticize other teachers you know they think that knows i know so what i understand everything so they think that way then they meditate but that person never get you know like increasing good quality because due to the uh, you know, uh, uh, this uh, without a teacher to guide, one is a, second is only you just follow the read the book and meditate, then become, uh, don't create accumulation merit enough. So that's problem. In Tibetan tradition, why we have to do this all uncommon, you know, preliminary practice, like 100,000 times post station, 100,000 times mandala, 100,000 times varjasawa, 100,000 times refuge prayers. So because purifying karma and create accumulation merit, so then 
uh, when you get into these meditations, they don't really start in the obstacle. Uh, people who don't practice uh, preliminary practice, they know enough that. Uh, so then get obstacles sometimes stuck here. Uh, that's the reason when we meditate, so you can feel unhappy sometimes. That that time then seeing the qual qualities of samadhi and the cultivate happiness. We also have to cultivate happiness, like then go back to going to meditate, love and the compassion. Uh, so that also helps, like uh, cultivate happiness. Then. Sometimes, like when you get fear is unhappy, so we have to visualize Yidam Deity and sometimes use the Buddha's image, magic object of the meditation. When you start to get sleepy and you notice mind to be getting sluggish. No, sorry, I think. When you notice my, uh, yeah, it's correct. When you start to get sleepy and you notice mind to be getting slug, sluggish and unclear, focus your intention on a happy, positive object is described above and pacify the lethargy of mind. So when you get this, uh, problem, lethargy, sluggish, sleepy. So then we have to visualize the Yadam Deity, actually good to, to practice Yadam Deity in this level. Uh, so mind to be getting sluggish and unclear. So focus your intention on a happy, positive object. As described above and pacify lethargy of mind. Focusing extremely intensely on the meditation, then we have to go back to my focus, you know, uh, uh, extremely intensely on the meditation. So, this part is like you know how to go through the obstacles when we are in the meditation. So this kind of experience arise that time so what we have to apply you know let go obstacles uh, so think about it here in this section is mahamudra level so here it says like focus your intention on happy positive object as described above and pacify. So why is thing about happy positive object is like practice Yadam Deity. And uh, actually who meditate this Mahamudra also have to know practice generation stage. Generation is coming next uh, next chapter. So practice Yadam Deity, have to know the practice Yadam Deity. See, this practice of Yadam Deity also helps different method purify obstacles. So this all the different practice helps recognize our nature. And when we practice meditate in our natural mind, purify obstacles. This all different practice helps for that. So that Main point, the everything is like this natural mind is the only essence of the, all these teachings. Buddha shared so many teachings. Why? It's because he tried to recognize this nature. So we rec we can be recognized, but without practice, can be lost easily. So that's the reason we have to practice. Then so many different kind of practice we have to use this method. Uh, then uh, if you are resting mind evenly and you push too hard or put 
in too much effort that also will become a cause of mental discussion. So this is a, like vipassana meditation. We need a balance when you meditate. You, if you are resting mind, even and you push too hard, means some people have to push too hard. Pushing hard is when we are in the shamatha meditation. We have to push very hard. So right now we are beginner. We have to push hard. Otherwise, we're not going to meditate because we have a so strong samsara habit. Worldly habit is naturally mind to go that direction. You know, even you right now listening teaching, but you get easily distracted and thinking about something worldly thought arise very easy. So arise that. Uh, so we have to. You have to put effort to you know focusing listening. Otherwise, you cannot be there. Uh, you cannot get. I mean, receive the teaching. So we need. Uh, uh, you know, push very hard when we are the in the path or engage, uh, engaging, but in the mind resting, then cannot push too hard, especially vipassana in there. When you into the natural state, you cannot push hard. If you, that time, if we push too hard, too much effort, that also will become a cause of mental distraction. So, this. Uh, you have to know when you have to apply push hard or not push hard. Sometimes misunderstanding, oh, you cannot push hard. You think always push hard is bad. No, no like that. So push hard sometimes very important. Without push too hard, we cannot get in the, there. When you get in there, you push too hard, you cannot really see there again, you know. <laughs> they push you away again. See, think about if you wanted to go somewhere, you you have to push to get there. You have to work hard to get there. When you get there, you still you're pushing, you cannot stay there. <laughs> you know. So you drive the car, you push gas. When you get where you're going, get there, still you push the gas. You cannot stay there. You stay there, you're going somewhere else. So just think that way, you know. When you into the natural state of mind, don't push hard. <laughs> uh, push too hard or put in too much effort, that also will become a cause of mental distraction. If you are sinking into lethargy, and you do not push or apply effort, that will become a cause of sinking even deeper into lethargy. So, okay, so you're going to do something where you're going to get plus, you push to get the, your office. When you get office, you don't do your job. You go back, you go sleep in there. You cannot done your job, what you have to do, right? So then that time is like you have to push a little bit harder to have to done your job. If you are sinking into lethargy and you do not push or apply effort, that will become a cause of sinking even deeper into lethargy. So this all is method is we have to follow the, our individual situation. Mm. You have to recognize when you have to push hard, when you don't push too hard. Okay, and you will not have any vipassana. Your mind will become as if blind. So, if you go into lethargy and uh, then you know your mind is seeking into deeper in the lethargy, you lost your kind of like mind for awareness is gone. So then you don't have any vipassana means, you know, you don't have a mind for awareness lost. Your mind will become as if blind. Then your mind is blind. No awareness, no mindful. Uh, therefore, if your mind sinks into lethargy, apply effort. So you have to put effort. If your mind is resting evenly, 
do not apply effort. Your mind is be stay in the nature. Your mind is not follow the lethargy, not follow the distraction. Then don't push anything. Just let it be there. Okay, so that's very important. So our problem is especially, you know, regular people. Problem is push too hard or go into the lethargy. These two extremes we follow. We really don't know how to stay in the no pushing, no go lethargy in the net, stay in the natural state. So that's the reason meditation is very hard one way. One way is very easy, simple, but we don't have to put effort, don't go in the lethargy, resting, that is meditation, but we never do that because it's habituate. You know, our minds already so strong habituate. Follow the, uh, you know, this lethargy, sleepy, fogginess, or other side, pushing, you know, distraction. So we go back and forth, always these two. Meditation means stay in the between there. So that between is the reality, natural, but we know stay in the natural reality. So meditation is a balance, not going to extremes. Uh, meditating on Vipassana, your wisdom will become predominant and your shamatha practice may suffer like a butter lung in the wind, falling through to destruction. So people who don't practice shamatha, the only focus for vipassana, then your mind becomes shaking because no stable. Reason is no in our shamatha meditation. Shamatha create mind is stable. So that's a problem. This one is like lot Tibetan Buddhist Buddhist practitioners problem. Tibetan Buddhist is less focused shamatha and the more focused for <laughs> Mahamudra and the Dzogchen. You know. Especially there were teachers that talk about teaching and they asked to do this in preliminary practice. When they finish, they share the Dzogchen and the Mahamudra teachings. They don't let to us to do shamatha medita uh, meditation. So then actually these practitioners recognize the natural mind, but they practice is not stable. That's also, I also feel like that, you know, I recognize natural mind because I have so many teachings received three instructions from the special masters. Then I came into like kind of Vipassana meditation, Shaman, uh, Vipassana, Vipassana, this Mahamudra way, and I can stay a little bit. I can feel, oh yeah, that is natural and correct meditation but really cannot stay too long. And it become thought comes, this talking arise, just mind goes follow that, you know? So the problem is, I recognize myself is I don't have enough shamatha meditation. So that's here is clearly that talk about that. So mind is not stable means. So, we have to meditate, you know, shama, uh, vipassana. If we wanted to meditate, uh, I mean, who wanted to meditate vipassana have to meditate shamatha meditation. So this all the practice is like, you really cannot say, I want only this. So we need everything bring together. So you're going to cook the food, you need so many things that are together. If you lose something, then your food is, taste is not there correctly. 
if you're going to build the house, not only strong, not only bricks, not only metals, you need so many things there together, right? So like that, if you're missing one part, it's like you just cannot complete your, your house. Uh, so like that, uh, we, we don't uh, is losing our this uh, one part of this meditation. So we cannot reach the Buddha hold. So that's the reason in this all the practices in here everything. So we have to use all this method. Uh, so then this all bring into the Buddha hold. All this practicing helps us bring into the enlightenment. So if we missing something, obviously we get uh, just you know, some obstacles there. Uh, at that, some land and the wind falling free to destruction. At that time, switch your focus to shamatha practice. So then, see, when mind gets destructions, lost thoughts arise, you have to go back to shamatha meditate. So you can do like shamatha maybe 10 minutes, focus with the object, 10 minutes focus with the breath, then no using any object, just mind try to stay like avert, you know, last part of shamatha, the bridge vipash, shamatha and the vipassana, just mind avert, it's be there, but no, you really see your mind, Maybe a couple of minutes, just be that way, and then slowly go into vipassana. Then low into your mind, resting. So that's you. You have to practice every every day. You know, you think this all practice put together. Then in the practice vipassana. So when you get a lethargy, then you have to put a little bit harder. You know and uh, your mind is like into the nature there don't put it too hard just let be at the natural state then recognize when thoughts arise emotion arise you recognize just let go don't follow that you know uh, emotion thoughts uh, watching the emotion thoughts researching kind of like practitioners but that is a beginner's not easy. Beginners, just when thought, emotion comes, recognize, try to go back to a meditative state there. When thought, emotion comes, just let go and go back to our minds resting. So that is the more beginners, meditators have to do. But then practitioners, when thought, emotion comes, then they the log to the thoughts, they log to emotions, they can, play with the emotion and the thought. They're seeing these thoughts, emotions no exist, you know, thoughts, emotions are like rootless, causeless, it's emptiness. So then this thoughts, emotion is transformed into called dharmakaya. Thoughts, emotions are dharmakaya, means they're seeing that thoughts, emotions, no essence, emptiness. So that is a, for really high level practitioners, not for beginners. Just our beginner level, long as we recognize our mind nature and be the nature resting, thought, emotion comes, let go, and into the nature state. Practitioners, like high level, these practitioners, thought, emotion is like they can use that, you know, play with that. Think about the like regular people. Our thought emotion control us, thought emotion make play us. You know, we are same in the, in the t television people, thought emotion is the same as the remote control. <laughs> remote control, you know, the thought emotions control us. So now, high level these practitioners, they uh, become re remote control, they play with the thought emotions, they totally become different opposite goals. So we are in, not into that level, so we just let go thoughts, emotions. Mind is 
be into the resting using awareness mindful uh, so then when your samatha predominates the meditative to cultivate wisdom when you gain equal capacity so uh, your mind resting when they not apply for okay meditate vipassana mm. oh i see at that time switch your focus onto the shamatha practice then when your shamatha practice dominates then we we'll go into the shamatha meditate the shamatha also can be predominant they meditate to cultivate wisdom. So if shamatha is too strong again, then wisdom is decreasing. What happens is like some people take this very strong shamatha, then just mind is resting so peacefully there, but they don't log into natural mind. That's also the problem become. They don't really in to see the natural mind they don't really log into the nature so mind is become so stable and peaceful and always like using like kind of object focus there or breath so then that person never log into natural state if you don't go into the natural state then no wisdom there your mind is peaceful, abiding, but no wisdom. So that's the reason when you shamatha predominantly meditate on cultivate wisdom means like vipassana. When you gain equal capacity at the border, so we have to create a, uh, equal capacity, vipassana shamatha. When you will abide without a fabrication in the bliss of body and mind. So some meditators has expectation the expectation is like you know when the meditator oh i wanted to something special peaceful feeling and the happiness you know like seeking into that uh, you will abide without fabrication and the bliss of body and mind so attached to that then they didn't get this bliss of body and the mind uh sorry about that. i did a mistake mm. so what is the uh i did a mistake when you wear a body without the fabrication in the bliss of body and the mind so you, when you in the meditate you get bliss your body and the mind so that is good or bad. What do you think? Either way, right? Can be good, can be bad, you know? So, this, uh, without a fabrication, if you, when you meditate, uh, with, without a fabrication, then uh, the blessings naturally the person get. Meditators get this blessed body's bliss mind bliss arise why is it arise because uh, when you meditate where it abides without fabrication uh, long as you have a fabrication then you cannot receive bliss body and mind so this you have to know what the you know fabrication is an obstacle without that your mind and the body get blessed. Mm. So that is good, but then you cannot attach to that bliss. Your whatever the bliss, body's bliss or mind bliss arise, just mind rest into the nature and you know with the mind for awareness, meditate resting. That time you think, oh no, I have so great body bliss, mind bliss. You attach to that, then become you create, uh, you know, uh, fabrication. 
long as you play the fabrication realistic attachment, then your bliss is gone. So cannot come back again. Uh, if you do not experience uh, experience the bliss of a body and the mind, so some people didn't get bliss body and the mind, then the, some meditators attached to that. Uh, they're really seeking to, you know, mind bliss, body's bliss. At that point, reflect that all world realms are illusory. So that person have to meditate and permanent. So this helps not attached to bliss. The problem is why you didn't get mind and body bliss. The reason is you have something, you know, uh, fabric, fabrication, or you have attached to something. Expectation, you have something expectation. So that is become obscuration. You can't receive a bliss of a body and a mind. So then what do you have to do? You, uh, at that point, you reflect that all worldly realms are illusory. You meditate everything, it's delusion. Same as dreaming. Like a dream, a marriage, think to yourself, all these sentient beings have not realized the profound truth and so they remain totally afflicted by confusion in samsara. So now you meditate all this uh, worldly everything, is same as dreaming, recognize delusion, and then also look to all these sentient beings. Uh, uh, these sentient beings, uh, you know, have not realized the profound truth. The, these beings didn't recognize their own natural mind. No one knows how to rest in mind, natural mind, rest in the mind. And so there, that's the reason, so they remain totally afflicted by confusion in samsara. So I will do whatever I can to ensure they realize the true nature of dharmata. So now you have to cultivate bodhicitta for them, you know. So why did the uh, experience arise, the bliss? of body and mind because some obstacles and some you know expectation or some many things like that's the reason no bless body and mind arising when you meditate so that's the reason we have to create accumulation merit actually you know mind resting meditation is a very easy one very easy, simple one, but uh, we don't know how to do that. And then there's so many obstacles. We don't know how to purify that. So that's the reason we have to apply this all method. We don't apply this method. So we always stuck in there or sometimes we lost effort. Because when you meditate, if you don't get blessed of a body and a mind, then you think whatever I do, practice meditation, no any experience. So you say whatever I practice, uh, no nothing, any sounds, no lo loss, like no no any accomplishments, no progressing. So that kind of fear you have, you can get. So that's the reason we have to apply method so this is a one of the method one of the method is when you didn't receive this body's bliss mind bliss so we have to meditate this four thoughts this first is like actually kind of four thought meditation you know impermanent recognize our situation like precious human body and uh, understanding defect of samsara 
and then we really want to benefit them, cultivate bodhicitta. So um, all these sentient beings have not realized to perform true, and so they remain totally afflicted by, by confusion samsara. So that is a very good method. Apply actually love, compassion, bodhicitta. So think about the way already talked here other side is like how to meditate love how to meditate compassion so in this one is a different ways create love and compassion in this method uh, other side is like we already told that is like we recognize our this all sentient beings used to our mother and we recognize their kindness we cultivate love and compassion. In this level, so you meditate, you know your own mind nature, and then you recognize all, the, all these sentient beings actually used to Buddha, they all have this same nature what we are have. But due to ignorance, they don't recognize. So that's the reason they are stuck in samsara endless suffering so now i wanted to benefit them so then comes love compassion to this being and cultivate bodhicitta so that is the causes of wisdom wisdom is a cause so the result is love and compassion bodhicitta other ways like love compassion is re cause result is wisdom so that's this teaching is followed like that way. But in here, wisdom is the cause, result is the love and the compassion. Then Bodhicitta arise. So have no realized the profound truth and so they remain totally afflicted by confession in samsara. I will do whatever I can do, ensure they realize the true nature of Dharma. Then you become into Bodhicitta. Thinking in this way, give rise to great compassion in the bodhicitta, arise bodhicitta. Uh, so that bodhicitta helps purify our karma. And then go back to meditate, rest in mind, can arise, bless our body and mind. So the, this meditation, Method, wisdom have to go together. So we have to apply together. Together means like when you meditate vipassana, so you also have to apply love, compassion, and bodhicitta, and meditate rest in mind, and then go back to apply this love and compassion meditation. Uh, so then that's purify karma, create accumulation merit, and then also you recognize your nature. So where is Buddha is come from? Not only wisdom, not only method. So wisdom is resting mind. Method is love, compassion, bodhicitta. So then method, wisdom, we have to bring together. So in this level, I just share already like Western country, people read the book, they go into the wisdom, vipassana, but they don't apply this method. If, we don't, if you don't apply method, your quality is cannot be increasing. Then you are stuck there. Same is like the stone you put in the water, the the stone cannot get wet. The stone cannot get soft. So like that, you know, like water is the same as wisdom. Your mind is the same as the stone. So the stone is living in the water, hundred years, thousand years, always the same, no change. So that kind of happening. If some people don't apply this method only just stay in the emptiness then they cannot transform their mind they cannot get increasing their quality 
so that's the reason we have to use method wisdom together. Our mind is the same as like the skin, the skin, the like animal's skin, you know, like think about the yas skin, cow's skin. Uh, so water is the same as wisdom. The oil is the same as method. So if you wanted to make the, the, the skin is a good leather, jacket, or shoes, you want to make something good, you know, useful things, you have to use water and oil both make soft. So otherwise your uh, skin is uh, like too tight. No can, you cannot do anything. So you have to make soft and also soft at the same time, like more flexible. So what do you need? You need water, you need oil. So then your the the skin is like become soft and flexible. You can use whatever you want. So like that, and uh, when we meditate, we have to make our minds become Buddha. We have to create a Buddha. So we need to use two things, wisdom and method. Missing one, then you cannot mind is become Buddha. We cannot make minds become Buddha. So thank that, you know, and we have to apply method here. The problem is meditators don't apply method. Only you go to method, also you cannot recognize your nature. Without the method, even you recognize your mind is like, I just show you the, the strong is living in the water like that. No become increasing qualities. Mm. When we talk about emptiness in view with all perfect, perfect qualities, actually, uh, you know, perfections. Why is it talking about perfection qualities means? All this quality have to come together. Then that's the reason uh, quality. Talk about emptiness in view with all perfection qualities. Uh, we talk about the six parameters. Generosity, morality, patience. Uh, so this three is part of a method. Joy for effort is both, fourth one. The five and the six is like five is meditation, six is wisdom. So that is wisdom. So this six parameter have to come together. Uh, generosity with wisdom, morality with wisdom, and the patient with the wisdom, F, joyful effort with the wisdom, meditation with the wisdom. So this all wisdom and this other parameter have to be together. So that's the reason emptiness is wisdom and view with all perfection qualities, all these other parameter qualities together. What do we mean? What the meaning is imbued with all the perfect qualities? We mean emptiness inseparable with the generosity. See here is already explained. Emptiness inseparable with the generosity. Emptiness inseparable with ethical discipline. So the emptiness inseparable with patience. Emptiness inseparable with diligence and emptiness meditation or is inseparable med with meditation too. So the last part, maybe you're confused, like meditation is wisdom, how, to, how can be uh, emptiness is meditation, meditation is emptiness, but actually uh, my nature is empty. So recognize that 
emptiness nature is with you saying your awareness so that is wisdom with wisdom so first is reality is emptiness then our awareness recognizes that so then that means like here is the emptiness inseparable with emptiness or wisdom together uh, we also mean emptiness inseparable with wisdom see emptiness inseparable with wisdom so in this way the promoter wisdom of emanations the the supreme emptiness in view with all the qualities so now here uh, the pro model wisdom is like our natural mind original unmodified mind is called is the uh, pro model wisdom we always has that right? we are uh, beginning last time until now always that nature is with us so that's the reason pro model wisdom of omniscience the spring emptiness in view with all the qualities so that nature is always uh, with all these qualities together supreme emptiness in view with all the qualities is brought to four realization through the skillful means of regenerous and so forth so the problem is we didn't recognize this uh, pro model wisdom we have that nature but we didn't recognize if we wanted to recognize that we have to bring all these qualities together to recognize so that's the reason here uh supreme emptiness in view with all the qualities is brought to full realization through the skillful means of generous and so forth using all these six parameters and bring the you know recognize all the nature state or uh, pro model wisdom we have to recognize that omniscient wisdom is a perfectly true scale for means so absolute truth wisdom is always perfect true scale for means the absolute truth like buddha's wisdom has all this scale for method together not separable scared for method is like six parameters six perfections all in there together this call it the qualities so same thing here is like stage of meditation uh here talk about all these different levels of meditations these are different level meditations all its quality is imbued with the this buddha's wisdom together buddha's wisdom is not only one buddha's wisdom is not only generosity buddha's wisdom is not only patience so buddha's wisdom is not only love meditation buddha's wisdom is not only compassion buddha's wisdom is not only here is like we talk about a, a four thought meditation so then where is the buddha's wisdom buddha's wisdom is all this meditation stage of meditation qualities together no separate separation uh, it does not arise one omniscient wisdom is perfectly true skill for me uh, it does not arise only from wisdom see this that is not only recognize emptiness buddha's wisdom the path of the buddhist power is uh, therefore asserted to be imbued with both wisdom and skill for me so then the path of bodhisattvas means like who are on the path uh, going to enlightenment is therefore asserted to be imbued with both wisdom and skill for me they have to practice together when we you when you walk you need two legs you know one leg cannot walk properly so you need to use two two legs to walk 
right, one by one, and uh, on the road. The same thing, Bodhisattvas on the path, they have to use this boat, uh, not only one. Exerted to be imbued with both wisdom and skillful means. This is the whole the transcending nirvana is attained. Then they can be get in the nirvana. Use the two walks, two legs, and you can get where you wanted to go. Without that, you cannot get where you wanted to go. Uh, skillful means. This is how the transcending nirvana is attained. That is nirvana that does not get straight either extremes. So then that person is like get into the nirvana. That is nirvana that does not get stuck in their extreme. So who use on the path this truth like wisdom and the method? Who use these two together? That person is become enlightened. So then they benefit others. If you use only one, maybe you can reach in the nirvana, but then you cannot benefit others. So that is here talking about. By the power of wisdom, Bodhisattvas did not fall into samsara. So why this Buddha is free from samsara? Because they have wisdom. Why this Bodhisattvas wanted to uh, like they, they get in the on the path to buddha horde because they has wisdom buddhisattva did not fall into samsara they're not stuck in the samsara due to the wisdom and they and by the power of skill for means they did not fall into the absorption of nirvana then these buddhisattvas when they enlightened become buddha they're not stuck in the nirvana due to the the bodhicitta method the bodhicitta method that bring you know benefit other beings. Uh, they do not fall into the absorption of nirvana. That is why when we are actually meditating on in transcendental wisdom, so that uh, bodhisattvas become enlightened, benefit others. That's why when we are actually meditating, when we meditate ourselves. We wanted to transcend wisdom means like Buddha's wisdom. And we have to use this both method, skillful method and wisdom. Uh, actually meditating in transcending wisdom. The transcending wisdom means like method, wisdom together, imbue quality together. That is called transcending your wisdom. Not only one, you know, both together is called transcendental wisdom. All rest in mind, even in the meditative absorption, we are not engaged actively in a skillful means practice such as generous and so forth. Uh, so, this session is a very important part too here. Uh, uh, what is here is most important is, uh, and um, that is why when we are actually meditating on transcendental wisdom or or rest in mind, even in a meditative absorption, we are not engaged actively in skillful means practice such as generous and so forth. So you can have this thought. When your mind is resting in the natural state, how you can apply love and compassion there? How you can apply generosity, patience, bodhicitta? Because it's totally different. Resting mind is not any thought, stay in the nature. So, skillful is. You think about the skill for is like uh, uh, actually in here says uh, uh, anyway it's engaging something engaging you know skill for is engaging you're doing something 
so wisdom is resting. So you think about this cannot be together. Do you recognize that? When your mind is resting in the natural state, how you can cultivate love and compassion because love and compassion is cultivating and resting mind is opposite of the cultivating. So that's the reason. This is why when we are actually meditating in transcending wisdom or resting mind, during that time, even in meditative absorption, our mind is absorption meditative wisdom or resting mind, or even the meditative absorption, we are not engaging. See, we are not engaging that time actively in a skillful means. So if you cultivate love of compassion, you are engaged actively so you're doing some generosity also engaging actively think about morality also engaging activity and uh, we talked already like four thoughts meditation also engaging activity meditation love compassion bodhicitta also engaging activity meditation the shamatha also kind of engaging active meditation because your mind is focused with the object. So this practice is uh, vipassana. Vipassana is uh, uh, meditating on transcending your wisdom, rest in mind. Your even the meditative absorption. So we are not doing engage activity skill for means practice. So then how you can bring together skill for means and wisdom together. So think think about it, you know, such as the generous and so forth, how can we bring together all these six perfections? However, means like yes, that's correct when you meditate in the natural state rest in mind, that time you are not doing any engaging activity, skillful thing. However, but this wisdom comes about because of relying on upper skillful means. But our wisdom recognizes natural mind is come from skillful method. In the beginning and at the conclusion, so that's the reason the, the recognized nature, mind, and uh, uh, you know, when we meditate, transcendental wisdom is relying on this skillful method, relying on skillful method. Wisdom is relying on the skillful method. So then how can we create a skillful method? Because uh, when we are in the resting, that time we cannot engage active and skillful or can rely on skill for me. So we have to do this way. Uh, skill for me is in the beginning and in the conclusion. In the beginning means when you going into rest in mind, first you have to cultivate the love and the compassion in the beginning. That's the reason we have these opening prayers. And at the conclusion means like when you finish meditate, you can do jan dedication. What you did is like oh, bring sentient beings in your mind. The practice is dedication to other beings. So that too is always possible there. Even you meditate like 10 minutes, rest in mind. Before that, you're just mentally generated. Mind generation, use mind generation. And then when you finish, you can use like mentally also dedication to that practice benefit others. So that is become skillful together. When we are resting our minds naturally in meditation, if we place our minds on a visualization or focal object of great compassion by directing our intention to sentient being, so then also another method, when you are resting our meditation, like you resting wisdom meditation, naturally in the meditation, if we 
if we place our mind on a re re visualization, so you can change, you know, like rest in mind, it's then become visualize all these sentient beings. Or bring you to the focal object of great compassion. So you bring all these beings into your uh, object of meditation. So this also, what the meditation does, like when they meditate and then, then into the natural state, they have their own experience, like joy, happy, and the body's blessed, mind's blessed, arise. Then the same time, then they look to other beings. They all these beings have the same capacity, same opportunity. Every being has this nature. Everyone has this, you know, like ability to recognize. And also everyone has the same nature. But then you see all oh, these beings due to ignorance. They don't recognize this nature. Then really arise compassion to them. So then same time also, your mind go into the Buddhist. Oh, I wanted to share this teaching for them. I wanted to benefit them. I wish them they recognize this nature. So that all is become create a skillful method. That's also when you meditate, you really into the natural state of meditate, that, that feeling is arise. The feeling is arise to the other being. So that is become, uh, you know, scared for meditation practice. Even you don't really thinking about, I'm going to do scared for meditation. But when you meditate resting mind, that kind of naturally feeling is arise to other beings. So that is a part of a skill for practice. Make sense or no? So that's, that's we have to like practice. Like when you see the water is the same as wisdom, the salt, salt is like same as a method. You know, salt, when you cook the food, so you need water, then you put the salt to make taste good food, right? So like that, you know, when you cook and then cooking time, same time like you put salt into the natural. So, uh, meditators practice meditate, that kind of feeling arises to others. Then that time your meditation practice is going right direction. Uh, your meditation is going right direction or not. Also, one sign of that, you know, if it comes like arise this compassion to other beings, then your practice is going right direction. That is another sun symbolized your practice going right direction. See, many people meditate this uh, vipassana, but that that feeling no arise because that that also obstacle and all, also not follow the really path, you know, right direction. Just only read the book and then meditate, then the thing I understand. Create more pride, egos. So that's a happening. So we have to care for everyone that way. Uh, you know, uh, meditation, rest in mind is going right direction. Then your compassion is arise. If your meditation, rest in mind is not going right direction, then your pride is arise obstacles arise. Uh, if we place our mind on visualize or focal object great compassion by directing our anything to sentient beings, what that is itself is relying on upon scale for means. So then that is relying on scale for means. This is why wisdom and scale for means are rely on simultaneously goes together. So when you meditate, rest in mind, you realize the nature and then really arise compassion for others. When you into the meditate, you see the, even you see the bugs running in front of you, 
comes compassion to them. You see the animals comes compassion. You see the human beings like does things. You really comes compassion. That means like you really realize your nature, and then you comes like compassion to them. Oh, this everyone has this opportunity, but due to ignorance, you know, no one you say no one practice comes compassion to them. Uh, in this way, after one has meditated for a long period of time on compassion uh, and bodhicitta and become more adult in this gradually one's mind stream will become rapid means like then your mind is become really arise the qualities, Buddha's qualities, rap rapid Jilly uh, Wang's mind stream will become rapping, rapping. and the transcending wisdom and awareness free from conceptual limitation will be realized clearly. Such Bodhisattva will become a true child of Buddha and will stand apart from all worldly beings. So what means here, so you use this wisdom and with skillful method together, practice that together, uh, meditate, then long period of time, the compassion of the bodhicitta and become more adopt, and gradually once mind stream will become rapid, you really into the, you rapping your mind. So you, we can get become first Pemi bodhisattva. Uh, and the transcending wisdom of awareness free from conceptual limitation will be realized clearly. So then, we really understand the absolute truth, realize absolute truth, such as the Bodhisattva will become a true child of Bodhicitta. So then we can say that time is we are really absolute truth Bodhisattva because we recognize absolute truth. That's the reason we have become absolute truth Bodhisattva. And we're standing apart from all worldly beings. Mm. Then we are that time is like different from all these worldly beings. Worldly beings means they don't recognize absolute truth. So who recognize absolute truth, then that is the, become, is Buddha and the West stand apart from all worldly beings. A Bodhisattva abide in the realization of Dharmata. Then that time then we, our mind is came into the natural state, absolute truth, abides in the realization of dharmata. The absolute nature of rea uh, reality and the recognition of dharma dharma, the, 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 the basic space of all phenomena. Uh, so that is the talk about the nature state. Then gradually as the Bodhisattva ascends through the higher premise and purify the mind, he or she eventually waking to unsurpassed true and perfect enlightenment. So slowly then graduate, like first Pemi Bodhisattva to graduate, second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, all the way to become Buddha hold. So then purify all the obscurations, the subtle level of obscurations, and arise like wisdom. True omniscient wisdom is arise. So that time it become Buddha. Okay, so then now you recognize where is the Buddha is come from. Without wisdom and skillful, cannot Buddha is arise. Okay, so now we finish the teaching today there. And uh, we finish the Vipassana part. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kempo. Thank you, Kempo. Thank you, Kempo. So Should then we, we can do. Thank you. Yeah, we have a caution to do time to do in the evening, seven o'clock. It's okay. cost time. Thank you. So, uh, so you check where you are. <laughs> <laughs> I know right now. Right now, I know okay. where I am. You, that you have to from. recognize where you are. Time is like East Coast time means like thinking about Washington DC time. <laughs> 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 Seven o'clock, so we can do 
question and uh, answer, and also we can meditate together. Okay, so now I'm going to do the uh, dedication prayer. Emma, oh, Zara Sanje, Nawanda, Yeda, 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 I Afternoon, you have a test. Okay, afternoon, you have a test. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what happens if we come like 10 minutes late? <laughs> there you go, Lisa. Who, come, who comes late? So I have a test for them. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, okay. Thank you so much, Campbell. Okay. Thank you, Campbell. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.